This is Katie Moore from My Town TV, and I'm backstage at the Bramble Bays Bowls Club, where Phil Emanuel, also known as one of Australia's greatest electric guitarists, is performing. Now, we've heard that he's right up here behind this door, so we're going to jump in and have a peek and see if we can have a chat with him. Phil, thanks so much for joining us. You're about to go on stage. Uh, how are you feeling? Um, good. I just had a beautiful meal, and um, I'm having a Jack Daniels at the moment. So, yeah, feeling great. Fantastic. Now, you've had over five decades of musical experience. Um, so, do you still get nervous when you have to go up on stage? Not really, no. Just before I go on, I think the audience, you know, you're not going to know what hit you. <laughs> what advice would you give uh, new, uh, new musicians who might be getting a bit nervous going up? What would you say to them? That's a good question. Very, very good one, Katie. Um, try and put yourself in the position of an audience member. Think of yourself as the audience looking at you. You've got to look like you know what you're doing and you're enjoying yourself. The audience always appreciates you if you look like you're enjoying yourself. And as far as playing goes and everything, do a lot of practice and get, it, get your playing together so you don't have to concentrate too much on your playing and look at the audience. Yeah. Great. And speaking of practice, uh, you obviously have a reputation of being one of Australia's greatest um, electric guitarists. How much practice do you do? I still practice now. I I've been playing for 52 years and I still, I still play probably every day. Sometimes it'll vary. I might, I might only play for about 20 minutes. Sometimes I might play for three or four hours. Now, you've played with some of Australia's and the world's most legendary musicians. Do you have a favourite that you've performed with? One guy I really admire that I, that I played with back in about 1989 was uh, Mark Knopfler from Dire Straits. Another guy that really scared me was Carlos Santana. I was on stage with Carlos. We, we were doing an encore in the Horden Pavilion at Sydney and I thought I played pretty loud but Carlos scared me. He, I have never felt such energy coming out of a guitar. Wow. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> So there are a number of aspiring guitarists would probably be watching this interview. What advice would you give them? Don't take too much notice of what people think is uh, the song of the day. Believe in what you're doing and play, play music that you love, that you love playing. So you're now, uh, not so long ago, you've become a granddad in May. Um, now, how do you balance your music and family commitments? How do you find time for everything? It was very hard. <laughs> I've, only, I've only seen my little granddaughter two or three times since she was born. I've got a pile of books at home to read to her once she, once she turns about two. I've got the whole uh, hardcover collection of Harry McCleary and I've got some Postman Pats. Because oh, my actual daughters, I've got three beautiful daughters and I bought them all up on Harry McClary and Postman Pat. And for my birthday, two years ago, um, my eldest daughter bought me a hardcover collection of Harry McClary books, oh, wow. which I'm going to read to my granddaughter. Yeah. Excellent. It's your first granddaughter? Yeah, first one. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> beautiful. Great. So now I understand that you've got a few more things coming up. So what's next for you? At the moment, I'm working, on, I'm working on two albums. One of them is entirely original, and the other one is a collection of really well-known, uh, famous uh, movie and TV themes. Back in the, in the 60s and 70s, some of the TV shows had the most incredible themes, you know, like Get Smart. To this day, the, the theme music to Get Smart is just remarkable, and it makes an incredible guitar instrumental. And um, with, with the other album, the entirely original album, that's got some interesting stuff on it too. There's a, there's a track on it that I'm trying to find a name for. It's actually written on bird calls, Australian native bird calls. And I, I actually play bird calls on the guitar. Wow. The whole reason behind the song is I was, I was mucking around one day out on my veranda and a butcher bird came and sat like three feet from me. 
Have you seen it? It's on Facebook. Yes, I did. Yeah. Well, that that bird just flew in and started singing with me. Wow. And, and that's where the that's where the idea for the song came. Great. But I can't work out a good name for the song. Or well, maybe we can put it out there, and if anyone has a good name, they can hop on yeah, Facebook and put one I forward. Gonna, I was going to call it Black and White Rhapsody, uh, Black and White Noise. Um, black and white bird after Blackbird by the Beatles <laughs> but I'm still trying to find a good name for it lovely well we won't keep you for too much longer so thank you so much for your time and yeah, enjoy you your know. performance tonight no worries thank you, thank you.